Hello folks, uh, this is part 1A. Uh, basically all of part 1 is all the boot camp scenarios. And this is the live fire exercise part. Now I really like what's uh, done here in terms of getting players to know what's going on. And a lot of the other boot camps really should have had this picture in. But this one shows both the game AI and uh, shows you how to play the, play any army man game, period. Uh, also remember that my rifle fires at a like it takes one to two seconds between shots thing so that means that you actually have to think so the first thing is using cover like I said they even provide movies for you uh, to give you a little bit better idea of what's going on which I really liked uh, it was a very nice touch and definitely lets you know what's going on. Also shows that they did fix some of the uh, texture issues that w was quite apparent in Land, Sea, and Air. Uh, which, if you see my LP on that one, you know how much I've ranted on. Uh, but, uh, like I said, uh, we'll go ahead and do the first one, which is just using cover to uh, take out the tan. And I don't know where the trigger is for it. Uh, like I said, this is one part of the thing with 3DO I never did like, was all the triggers. They should have either had them out or something. But the triggers kind of get annoying. And I know this is PS1, so even the Sergeant Heroes line had them, and Duke Nukem had them, and all that. It's kind of something that was around during that era of gaming. So I can't really gripe there, but it is kind of annoying sometimes when the, the triggers happen a little too late. So now we'll move on to the next range. Oh, and that's how the bayonet works, for those who are curious. We'll be getting into that later, but right now it's the next range. This is the diving and crawl range. Uh, again, like I said, very good video example of how and, and this would work and how you would use it. So, like I said, kudos to 3DO for this, and they should have incorporated this more often because uh, it w definitely would have helped. Now, here's the part I don't get. They're saying that he's using the mortar from the dive position, and uh, that don't look right. But anyway, uh, unfortunately, they spawn even with that popped up, and that kind of gets annoying. See, uh, you have you have to react right away. You can't even have time to read it. But pretty much the same AI that was in Lancy and Air. Uh, basically, they'll shoot always where they saw you last, giving you a little bit of time to set up an ambush or to uh, put situations in your favor. I don't think they chase you though. Might be wrong. I know that they stooped the AI up a bit ago, though, which was a good thing. But I don't know how exactly they changed it other than that. And now we go to the bayonet range. And it shows you an example of how stealth comes into play. Basically, if you stand in the shadows, they have a little bit less of a chance of finding you versus if you're out in the open. And pretty obvious there. Unfortunately, they don't show him using the bayonet, which was kind of they should have, but. And they're probably going to use that feature that they did in the comm tower level uh, for stealth, but I don't know. But pretty much simple mission here of just bayonet the first guy and then bayonet the second guy. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've always had bad luck with trying to bayonet the second guy, so I'll just shoot him. Just run up there. It looks like, yeah, it takes a little bit of effort. At least you don't have to set up and hold it like you did on the first one. 
but it's still rather annoying. I think they nerfed the range a little bit for the bayonet. And notice that he still has that uh, half uh, half animated moving round death animation. That's to show you that he's been bayoneted. Okay, now we move on to the third range. And this is the rolling and sidestepping. Uh, this is their showing off of the uh, auto aim and the manual aim. I think what they tried to do is they tried to uh, incorporate a little easier auto aim for you and uh, try to work with the uh, manual aim and the auto aim to kind of work hand in hand with each other. Uh, unlike Lancy and Air, uh, where it was kind of blah and then. World at War is just eh, too. So hopefully they made it a little cleaner and user friendlier, where it's not as much of a gripe issue. I mean, like I said, I, as you can see there, I can only take one shot at, like every couple seconds, which does kind of bog the game down, but it does make it a little more challenging. I just put on this guy, boom. Hit again, boom. See, auto aim kind of so semi works half decent now. But this is the intro level, so who knows if they changed it again on us. Boom, boom. Just two hits, pop them down, they die. And now we'll go with the actual uh, combat range. Uh, it's Fawn Course uses a combination of all the ones you just went through. First thing is the sidestep roll, as you can see here. And also, here's a new, other new handy new feature. You can. Uh, you can roll to the sides while having your aim your aim up. You can't you can't move forward with it other than rolling, but it is an improvement, giving you a little bit easier time. Also, you notice the auto aim does work with the uh, crosshair a bit, but it's not as douchey as it was before. Grenades, nice easy toss, nothing too hard there. Normally, like at World of War, it would have just hit the thing, berm on you, and then you had to run back like an idiot or get blown up by your own grenade. So good arc and nice programming on that. And then we'll go on to the next part. Pretty much wait for them to trigger. And we have some spare grenades, so let's just go ahead and uh, throw them, and we'll call it a video. So this is Kiki signing out uh, for our, Let's Play Army Man Final Front Part 1A. Thank you.